Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. What a location. I can't believe my back is to it the whole time. So please, please take lots of pictures so that uh, I can see it later, how this looked. Uh, and I also just want to say thank you so much, Aviva. Uh, I actually think I could put up all of the words, the lyrics from that song, and do the same talk I'm going to do. Like, how magical is that? And I was at a dinner last night that Tina put on, and uh, someone who had spoken here previously at a Creative Mornings said the music was so perfect as an introduction to what she was going to talk about, and I feel exactly the same way. So thank you so much, and thank you to the universe for making that happen. All right, uh, first things first, here's the Twitter stuff, Insta, if you want to tweet. Equality. It's amazing that this is the theme that I'm speaking to today. When Tina said it was equality, uh, I have a pretty unfiltered uh, movement from someone asked me a question or suggest something into action. I have almost no filter there anymore because I'm over 50 and I don't give a crap about like all those things that used to stop you from doing things. I'm like right into motion. So when I hear the word equality, the first place I went was to our economic model in the world. So I don't know if you know this, but right now in the world, five people have the same wealth as three and a half billion people. When I started CEO two years ago, it was 85 people. Last year it was 62, this year it's five. This to me is the result of a mindset which is winner takes all. Our mindset in the world that everything is operating around is winner takes all. You see that with Uber, for example. Um, we're betting it all on red. I think we live in a giant casino and the game's over. We need a whole new way. So this is the beginning to a new future. The other thing that hit me around this is in 2008, there was a market crash in the United States that maybe some of you will remember. And at that moment, we found, you found, uh, as an American, $17 trillion in three weeks to bail out the banks. And that's a crazy huge number. What does that even mean? But just to give you some sense, $17 trillion is 600 years without poverty on the planet. 600 years without hunger. We found that money in three weeks. There is, everything is just crazy broken in this world. And that's the first place I went with equality. So we're living in this narrative, in this stew of an economy that's bad for us. The next thing that came up when I thought of equality, going a little deeper dive, was my own personal story. Uh, and growing up as a woman in this world that was not designed by us or for us. It's uh, designed by somebody else. You can guess who that might be. Um, when I was 12, I was a competitive soccer player. There were no girls teams at the time, and I played with boys. And there was a, an all-star team that was selected. And I was selected to be on the team as the only girl, and we were going to go on this trip to the United States. And the coach said, you can't be on the team because it's all boys. We can't have a girl, a 12-year-old girl on the bus with boys going across the border and getting billeted. Does people know what billeted means? It means, uh, it's like such an old word, I didn't know this, but billeted means you are hosted by another family, right? So you get matched with someone from another team, so it meant I would be matched with a boy. Anyway, they're like, you can't do this, and my mother's feminista friend lost her shit uh, and said, you have to be on the team and fought and fought and fought for it. And I was super uncomfortable. This was really the first moment where I kind of felt different because I grew up in a family full of boys. I was just one of the boys. Anyway, I got on the bus to go on this trip. And after 13 minutes, of course, 12 year olds get bored and start doing bad things. And uh, a couple of people dropped uh, a bag out the window with an apple in it at, that hit a car coming on the, going the other direction. About 30 minutes later, we were pulled over by the police. And the cop got on the bus and he said, did someone do this? Silence. Nobody said a word. And I was sitting at the back, and so the coach slowly walked to the back of the bus, stood in front of me, totally towering over me. I was sitting down looking up, and he said, Vicky, I know you won't lie. Did somebody do this? I won't even analyze what that means for, like, what goes into your head about that for the rest of your life. Of course, I lied, because I want to be part of the team. Fast forward 20 years, I was taking my company public. And 
this was a really big deal. We merged with a whole bunch of bankers. They had a $60 million fund. They were taking us public. We had the first public incubator in Canada. And we were starting a company a month. It was an incredibly exciting time. And I had built this from an idea to getting ready to go public in five years. And at the 11th hour of the negotiations, they came up to me and they said, we don't want you to be the CEO. We want him to be the CEO. And they pointed at uh, my co-founder. And it was one of those moments where I was feeling already pretty out of my realm. I'd been on a road show pitching all these bankers. I did not speak banker. Uh, it was really challenging. And I cried. And then they immediately went, see what we mean? Like, what the hell? Why are you crying? Um, I just was feeling so picked at and like, here are all the things you're not good at. And so I went home and I thought about it. And the next day I said, okay, and I caved and we were co-CEOs. And when I walked into my company, every single person looked at me completely differently. Totally differently. I don't want to see a future like that, and I'm, entre I'm an entrepreneur who is constantly uh, working with female entrepreneurs, and I'm seeing the same thing happen to the next generation. I think we're living in a world where everything is broken, everything. Like, if you look around you, there's so many things that we need to change. But I also think, because I'm an entrepreneur, and what a great time to be alive. Downer's over now. Um, <laughs> You know, really, I think this is a really, really important thing to, be, to do for anybody in the world right now with your mindset shift, going from this, oh, everything looks like a tragedy to where's the opportunity, right? The constant flip in your mind is something I work on all the time. Oh, it's going to be hard. What if it wasn't? We don't have enough money. What if we did? So everything's broken. What a great time to be alive. So I think the message here really is we made all of this up and we can change it. Everything around you is made up. Everything. And we weren't so good at version 1.0. We need to get to the next one. And if you're going to start all over again and figure out a new model, how do you do that? And so this quote is really a guiding light for me. I don't know how many people have seen this from Bucky Fuller. And the quote is, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Show, don't tell. So this is, what, this is the work I'm engaged in right now, creating uh, a new organization called SheEO, which has an underlying program called Radical Generosity. Radical Generosity, what does that mean? Nobody really knows, and that's why we called it Radical Generosity, because it's an invitation to be different, to come up and show up in a different spirit. And we have a model that is for funding and supporting female entrepreneurs, and here's how it works, super simple. 500 women contribute $1,100 each. It's an act of radical generosity. That money is pooled together in a fund, and then it's loaned out to five female entrepreneurs at 0% interest. They pay that money back over five years, and then it's loaned out again. We're building a billion dollar perpetual fund that we will pass on to our daughters and our granddaughters and our nieces and our great-granddaughters forever. We are on track to by 2026, which is nine years from now. A million women around the world contributing capital. They don't get their money back. It's an act of radical generosity, and it's paid forward over and over. And the cool thing, if you're a female entrepreneur and you're like squirming in your seat excited about this, the other part of this, besides a 0% interest loan, is you actually get 500 women on your team. What do you need? So all of us show up. Every month you have an ask. Within 24 hours of that ask, entrepreneurs get exactly what they want. We come forward as your customers, as your supporters, as advisors, as mentors. This is the approach. So one thing that we do as part of this, and again, just think from the equality lens, every one of these uh, messages is there's something underneath this. How do we do things differently? In a winner-takes-all model right now, you would take that $500,000 and have one winner, right? One person wins. We do that a bit differently. The five women who get selected come together for a weekend at a retreat, and I thought, how do you, how do you figure out the best way to allocate capital? Now we bet it all on red in our existing model. How would you do that differently? And so our model is five of you come together, get to know each other, you're with your coaches, you understand negotiating styles, and then on the final day we say, we're going to leave the room now, and it's over to you to divide up the money. And whatever you decide, we will be fine with. There's only two principles 
that are part of this. One is you can't give it all to one and you can't divide it up evenly. Because what would five women who just became best friends do? Everyone take 100,000, I love you. This is the best, let's just go home. Can't be that easy, right? How do you do that? And so every single time we do this, it's a different experiment. Guess what happens? Everybody gets money, yeah? Everybody gets money every single time. The first time that happened, I was kind of surprised, and now I'm like, this is exactly what we do. We do not pick one child over another. Everyone has a way to be successful. They don't all get the same amount of money, but there's a process that they go through. It's, it's really fascinating. It's gonna make a good documentary. So I wanna tell you just about three different stories in our network that I think fit, again, around this theme of equality. This is Barb, and she founded something called the Alinker. This is a rethinking of the walker and the wheelchair. How cool does that look? It's like a giant adult tricycle with no pedals. The pedals are your feet. And this came to her from a problem statement or a question from her mom. Her mother said, over my dead body will I ever use one of those? And she pointed at someone in a walker in the park. Because the first thing that happens when you lose mobility is you go down a level. You sit in a wheelchair now or you're hunched over with a walker, and there's an immediate loss of dignity. People look down at you. It happens almost overnight when you lose mobility. 80% of people who have lost mobility get depressed. So she said, my first thing I have to figure out, and as designers in the room think this through, how do I keep people at eye height so we're still looking at each other this way? And then the second piece was, how can it be so cool that everybody wants one? So you're not other. Again, she calls this a vehicle for social change. This is one of the companies that was selected by 500 women this year in Canada. Another one of our companies that was selected out of San Francisco is called Callisto. And this is an app for people who get sexually abused. It's starting on campuses. Right now, if there's a sexual assault on campus, you go to the office of security. There's usually a dude sitting across from you who's probably twice your age and he writes down what you say, and you don't get to see what he writes down. He interviews you. It's an awful situation. And then if it escalates to the next level, you get interviewed again, they do another version of that. You never get to see what the person's writing down. This app allows you to write down your own story in your own words and timestamp it. You can report it then or leave it for later, but it's a chance to put it in your own hands. And this is now on nine campuses. It started on Stanford, Stanford's campus. It just uh, expanded to Canada, and they're rolling around the world. This is a young woman who had this situation herself, and she wanted to change it. These are some of the companies that we're selecting. The last one is Magnus Mode. And for people who are living on the autism spectrum, um, they have a hard time being independent. And Nadia, who created this company, when her brother uh, was growing up, she wanted to help him, so she created all these card decks, because he's autistic. And so it was, pick up your toothbrush, put toothpaste on it. She walked through every single step for him and created these fun card decks. And as she talked about it to other people in the network, they said, this is really cool, you should create an app. So she built this app, and now she's got companies sponsoring every single element of this, so how to take public transportation, how to use an ATM, how to order a coffee. She's created a cool opportunity for people to use this and live more independently as a result. So those are some of the stories in CEO that are emerging. And again, is how are you going to use your leadership to create change in the world? As incredible people in this audience who are writers, designers, the top communicators that we have around us, how can you help us to find new images and new narratives and new language. This is a really big challenge. If we're gonna to move to a new world, we really need to figure out how to change these images. This is Barbara Roberts. Can you imagine what kind of image you would get if you Googled entrepreneur in residence? What, what would show up? Yeah, pretty much. She's the entrepreneur in residence at Columbia University. She's in her late 60s or early 70s. That's not the image you would necessarily think, but this, she also represents the fastest growing, most successful demographic of entrepreneur in the world right now. Women over 50, 10 million plus in revenue. 
Would we ever know that from reading magazines or seeing anything around us? That's the fastest growing demographic, that's Barb. We have a network full of these incredible women who are giving back to the next generation coming along. But again, I think about these images all the time. I wanna do a whole presentation one time of just, you know, HSBC, you know the HSBC ads? They kind of do this too, right? They get you out of your thinking of the way things, what you think the image is related to and then what really is out there. So this is new images, thinking of how we get those out there to shift our thinking. The next place is a new narrative and we have a pretty terrible narrative in business. We use the word business to treat people poorly. It's just business, get over it. You're not a nice person, it's just business. I didn't mean it personally. That's so BS. That is a terrible, terrible phrase. And so with our concept of radical generosity at SHEU, it's like, what would happen? And this is the question that you have on your shirts today, if you put on a name tag. If you were surrounded by radically generous people, how would you act differently? How would you think differently? And one of the things that we've noticed in our network is when you are a person with a dream who's not really feeling like you know what you're doing, and then you're the only one who doesn't know what you're doing, like everyone's making it up, but sometimes you don't know that everyone's making it up. When you're in that space, the last thing you need is someone pointing out to you what you're not doing right. We don't reach our potential by being picked at all day. We reach our potential by being lifted up by others around us. And so imagine being surrounded by radically generous people and how that would shift your own dreams. Would you be older? Would you be more confident? Would you encourage other people, even when you thought their ideas were crazy? These are some of the things I think we have to really shift the narrative that we have out there about what it takes to be successful, because I don't know a single person who's reached their potential. I feel like I'm just getting started. So how can we create a different vibe and an energy around it? And I feel like as soon as you walk in here, and this is why Tina and I are total soul sisters, that she mentioned generosity three times in the first sentence, and I'm like, ah, oh, swoon. This is like amazing. That's the, that's the space I wanna be surrounded by because I just also think we will have a much stronger community and we will all be much happier if we do that. One other thing I wanted to talk about is language. Um, I, I don't know if anyone else can help me with this, but I'm on a continuous project to find a way to say that I had a kick-ass day without saying kick-ass. That I killed it without saying I killed it, because who wants to say you killed it? Um, the F-bombs I'd like to keep, but still. Um, but without the bomb part, like what's the other version of it, right? And so I think of like, I was so nice to people today and it felt so good and they got so much more confidence. It's like, really? How exciting for you. <laughs> like I can just imagine my brothers looking at me like, what the hell, Vic? Um, so how do I come home and just like, right? Like the phrase like, you killed it today. How can we find better language for that? All of our words uh, that are about lifting people up and creating a better society are all soft, soft. How do we shift that? It's really crazy. So with CEO, some of the things that we've done is we've created new words for everything. So instead of being an investor, we call you an activator. And everyone's like, what's an activator? Well, you're activating your capital and your network and your expertise, everything you've got, all of your capital. Because if we said investor, you would come in with an investor hat on, focus on how to get your money back. You're not getting your money back, so stop thinking that way. Activator. And then we call you a venture, even instead of a business. Because how can ventures be different? We actually don't care what structure you are. You can be a nonprofit, or you can be a business, as long as you can pay back your $100,000 loan. We don't care what your structure is, because structure is based on an old model. We're focused on the impact. What's the impact that you can have that will create a better world? So changing all these words, and then radical generosity is another one, which is just, people are like, can you define that? I said, nope, we're not defining that. We don't need to define it. It's different for everyone. It's working on every single day. I uh, used to be not as nice as I am now. And I've had to reprogram that. So when I get a crusty email, do so you know what crusty means? Not so nice email. Uh, when I get a crusty email, I, have to, I stop myself for a moment and I'm like, what's, the radically generous response. What is the radically generous response? So I encourage you to think that through too. And I'd like to just really end with this question. What do you wake up wanting to change? What do you wake up wanting to change? We so desperately need you. We need new ideas. 
We need your leadership out there to get us to a better world. Surround yourself with radically generous people and find your path forward. Thank you.